everybody. Welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Missy Doan and I'm so excited to be with you here today. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your week with us. Um, as always, well, as as usual, I should say, Liz is back with us. Hello. So it's, it's so great to have you back. I hope you enjoyed your vacation. Yes, thank you. And then we've got our wonderful camera crew here as well. And let's see where we have people tuning in from. We have Cindy. Oh, it's they're going fast today. Uh, Colleen from Nova Scotia, Glenna from Wyoming, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, Liz, you have anybody over there on YouTube watching? Yes, we've got lots of folks tuning in. We have Jennifer from Memphis, Missouri. Oh, awesome. We have Tammy from Texas. A lot of Texas hellos. Very we good. We also have Tina from Copenhagen, Denmark. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I, I love seeing where everybody's tuning in from. It's just so amazing to me that we uh, get to have this little chat and this time together all around the world. So I, I really, truly appreciate it. Cole's throwing things back there. It's fine. Don't worry, it's, it's cool. It's fine. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for being here. We've got a really fun project. We're gonna make this adorable insulated tote from June Taylor. I've actually switched it up a little bit on how um, they originally designed it, but I think I made some great improvements. I think you'll like it. Um, it's this really great quilt as you go um, insulated batting. It's pre-printed and you can see here in this image that they use some strips and um, different prints to make this kind of scrappy version in their, if you follow their designs exactly. But I just used solid yardage and mixed it up a little bit. So I want to show you how I did that. So let's start by opening this up. And this is also an insulated batting, exactly. Right? Which is so it helps, special. helps keep things um, hot and cold, which is, you know, great if you are grocery shopping and have lots of popsicles that you want to keep nice and chilly as you're driving home. So I, I guess we should talk for a minute about how cute this fabric is. Can right? we just talk about these popsicles? It's freaking adorable. So <laughs> adorable. And I did notice quite a few of you. Um, pointed that out when we posted the teaser last night. And I have been dying to show you this project because it is seriously the cutest fabric. I love it so much. So let's cover what you need supplies wise. You're going to need um, this insulated pre-printing batting. It comes uh, with the, uh, the strapping, the strapping <laughs> that you need to make your handles. And then you're also going to need, hold on Liz, how much fabric did I say? A yard and a, a half? Mm -hmm yard and a half for the outside of your bag, and then um, a yard and a half, or is it just a yard for the a outside? A yard for the outside. Yard for the outside, yard and a half for the inside, the binding, and your and handles. The yep. so, so there we go, we got there eventually. Yep. So a yard for the outside, yard and a half for the lining, straps, and binding, just to make that abundantly clear. Awesome. <laughs> and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our batting, oops, and it even has these little uh, rubber bands that you can add if you want to make a closure, those are included. And then there's this little uh, plastic um, stabilizer that you can put into the bottom to help to your help bag stand up. stay upright. So I'm just going to set those aside for now. Perfect. And open up this batting so you can see it. So I think you guys can see it's shiny metallic. It is. It's got kind of a, a metallic and that's what makes it insulated and helps protect with that hot and cold. And so you can see, it is printed on here, and if you follow the um, June Taylor instructions that are included as written, it, it will tell you which piece to place where. They're all numbered, and you would just place your fabric, sew it to the next. It's kind of like a paint by numbers it's kind with of fabric. Like paint by number, <laughs> exactly. But we are going to do this a little differently. So all I'm going to do is start cutting out the edge of this batting. Where is my large ruler? There it is. So we're just gonna lay our ruler. And that's a nice large ruler. It is. We're gonna lay our ruler on the edge here. And you can see I'm cutting just on the other side of this, the solid blue line. That's gonna be our edge line. And I'm just gonna work my way all the way around this. The dashed line that you see on the end, that is um, your stitch line. This is, allows for a half inch seam allowance in this project. And so if you go over with your rotary cutter a little bit to make sure you get these corners, you don't have to worry because all of that's gonna be included as your, in your seam if you don't go all the way through that dashed line. So just don't get too close to that. We're just gonna keep cutting. 
and cutting. And Barbara asks, is this the same material that we would use in oven mitts and pot holders? I would think that it's pretty similar. Yeah, so it is an insulated batting and this one I think is because it's pre-printed, like is not gonna be in the same exact category. Right. But basically, yes, we're using something that keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. Exactly. So great question. And so you can, you can see, you get the gist. I'm just gonna cut this out right on the solid line. I have one here. Let me show you that's already all cut. So you can see it's all cut out. And then what I did is I took my yard of fabric and you can actually trim it down to, I believe it's 24 inches by your width of fabric. Let me just double check. Yep, 24 inches by the width of fabric. And this is what I'm going to use as the pattern now to cut out my yardage. And so I'm just going to, you know, set my yardage down on my cutting mat and do the exact same thing. You can see this one's already attached, yep. but I just want to show you how I did it here. And so the, we'll just lay this out. And the other thing too, you have this really super cute fabric. It's directional, right? but it looks really cute on the side. So exactly. Yeah. So you can see this is, this is actually, um, well, actually, if you look at it now, because this is salvage to salvage, it's printed on the side. Exactly. But we were worried about making them stand upright. But then once I put it together and they're laying on the side, it's darling. And it's so absolutely darling. You don't have to worry about it. So as long as it works that way, you just kind of want to make sure if you are working with directional fabric that, you know, if you've got a little character that their heads are upright, <laughs> whatever, right. whatever you need to Maybe do Maybe they're there. taking a nap. It's cool. It, that's true. <laughs> they might be tired. And so then we're just gonna lay this on here, just like so, and use our batting as our template to cut it out. And so you can see here, it's really straightforward. And that 24 inches gives you just a little bit of hangover to um, go and just trim it up exactly to match your batting. And once you've done that, all that we're going to do is use these lines that were originally placed on this batting um, as your, um, your, to line up your fabric as you're doing quilt as you go. I use those as my guidelines to actually quilt these layers together. So let me show you that. You can see here, I've got my cutout popsicle print and I've started the quilting. Oh, I almost forgot to mention my favorite thing again. To, uh, to adhere it to this, because we do want to baste it in place. You could pin, you could um, use spray based, but if you have been watching, I am a big fan of this Quilter Select Free Fuse. It's a sprinkle on powder, and then you just hold a hot iron in place for three to four seconds and, and work across that. And so that's what I did. I sprinkled this on the backside, pressed it down, and made sure it was really well basted and then I started the quilting. I'm glad I didn't forget that. Yeah, because then it doesn't move and you don't exactly. have to worry about any pins exactly. in your way. It's I didn't have bad. any issues at all with it shifting. It stayed so nicely and even now um, I love this product because it doesn't get too crispy or crunchy. Um, the needle goes through it really well. I've been super happy with it and I just found out because I have been using quite a bit that they do actually make um, a refill packet that's available on our website. So if you're interested, we, we carry both the Quilter Select Free Fuse, and then you can get refill um, packets to, to fill that back up as you use it. So then let's take this to the machine. Um, because this is such a fun project that's bright and cheerful, I did decide to use um, a, a coordinating thread. So I've got this fun purple thread on the machine because on this one, I'm actually gonna use this cute purple Yay. solid to match. I've used this, this kind of teal color on this one. But let's go ahead and finish up this quilting. And we do have a question, Misty. When you were sure. when you're um, using the free fuse powder mm -hmm. to base this, did you baste it before you cut the fabric out around the shape? I actually did not. Okay. I did not. I mean, you absolutely could if you were if you were worried about it shifting. But for me, I just didn't have any trouble. I did make sure that my yardage was pressed really nicely before I cut it out using the batting as a template. Then I didn't have to worry about um, any wrinkles or um, pleats getting in the way. And then I just had no, no issues at all once that was cut okay. because you're really only cutting just these little notches out. That's essentially the only thing that's changing 
um, from your yardage. But if you're worried about it shifting and you think it would be easier, by all means, go ahead, uh, go ahead and, and baste it first. Okay. Okay, so now we have started most of these lines. You can see I'm just using these straight lines on the batting itself as the quilting lines. And so I'm putting those up um, so I can see them as they're going into the machine. And I just got a few more here to finish. So let's just go over these. Oops. Of course, right as I started, I came unthreaded. So let's fix that. And you chose the purple because you're going to use purple fabric, but you can also do contrasting color, oh, absolutely. red and fabric, and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, get creative. Da -da -da. Okay, and also folks are pointing out, yes, the sparkly fabric, as we're thinking of the batting, it is similar to an insole bright. So it, it is yes. it is a an insulated batting. Insole it, bright is another brand of that, and we do have that available on our website as well. Exactly. Okay. So now it's threaded and we're just going to straight line quilt this. You'll notice I am just using my regular foot. I'm not using a walking foot. This isn't a lot of extra layers. Um, so I had no trouble uh, just using my regular foot. If you're worried about it, this would be a great place to use that walking foot. And I'm just making sure that this marked line is going straight in front of my needle and I'm just gonna make my way down. That's one of the things we love about the Quilt As You Go project is it's just tracing the line yeah. and you are good to go. Exactly. And you can see I'm actually, I did start um, when I was quilting this, I started in the middle and worked my way out. So I wasn't pushing fabric towards the middle, but I didn't flip it or rotate it or do anything too crazy. I'm just working my way towards the outside. And Copper's asking, could you use a charm or layer cake for this? I mean, you absolutely could. These long strips, you Those can look see. like they're kind of built for. It's, I would think it's more for like a jelly roll yeah. if you were gonna use a pre-cut. Um, but then again, these sections in the middle are larger than a jelly roll. So it's, it's a great scrap project, but because it required so many different sizes, that's why I decided to go with just this solid yardage because I thought it still turns out adorable and makes it even easier. So we're just gonna finish up these two more rows of quilting. Okay. You have to stop and move your hands sometimes. I like to get like way out ahead of myself. Not good practice. There we go. There we go, and one more. Just wanted you guys to see how easy this is to sew through with both the insulated batting and that free fuse. It's working really well. We do have a couple other questions coming in about how to fuse the batting to okay. the fabric. So the fabric, uh, the batting does say not to iron directly on the one side so when you're when you are basting it on you're kind of doing it from the fabric side exactly right? yes and does it matter which side of the batting so we're looking at the printed side being the one that we can see so we can right. sew on it right so you fused to the other to the side opposite side that's right. exactly right let me just do a little demo of that okay thank since you since we have some people asking i would be happy to do that let me just move this stuff out of the way and pull this back up here. Now remember, we don't have this all the way cut out, but I do want you to see just what I'm showing. So I'm just gonna use some fabric and we'll start with this. So here's our printed side. I'm actually gonna put this down towards my pressing mat. And you can see this kind of metallic surface, but when you feel it, it feels like normal batting. It's got the same kind of hand that you would be used to with, with uh, traditional batting. And then I'm gonna take my fabric, just like normal, and the goal here is to put this side up. And so I'm just gonna start by rolling this back, um, and this is exactly how I did it when I was doing it myself. I worked in kind of small sections and just worked down. So let me get the one that's open here, here we go. 
and here's uh, my, my free fuse, and it just sprinkles on kind of like a salt and pepper shaker, and you just sprinkle that powder, just like so. And it's super forgiving. And so then I just roll this back, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then with a nice hot iron, I'm actually gonna turn that up a little bit. It was on a medium setting, so it might need to heat up a little bit more. But we're just gonna hold this on and just let it start fusing. And so basically it's melting that powder into a glue that sticks exactly. our two pieces together. Exactly. And the thing that I really love about it is, you know, as opposed to like a spray base that we would use where you get that overspray um, that kind of gets everywhere and makes everything sticky, even if this powder gets on my mat, as long as I don't touch it with my iron, I can just brush it off and it just goes away. It doesn't leave anything sticky. And so I just move this around, make sure it's fused. I think we're doing really well here. You do need to make sure you get plenty on your edges. And so sometimes I'll go back and I can just roll back that edge and sprinkle a little bit more in there and then roll that fabric back and just press it again. And you can see now that's fused beautifully and it just bases it right in place and it, it's so easy. Like seriously, so favorite. I, I am so converted <laughs> to this stuff. It is amazing, especially for all of these small projects. I have yet to try it on a large quilt, but I mean, I'm willing. I'm willing to try it at this point. <laughs> it works great. So hopefully that answered that question for you. And now we have this um, all quilted on this one side. You can turn it over and see our purple stitching that's running all the way through it. And the next step is to prepare our handles. So that's what we're going to move on to. And because I chose this purple for the one I'm making, what you're going to need is out of your yardage, you're going to cut three four inch strips. And you're going to cut one of those four inch strips in half and we're going to attach it to the other two on a 45. You can see here where I join those together because you, you do need a little bit more than the width of fabric uh, to make your straps. And so by doing that, it gives you more than enough. And then you can see here, I just took my four inch um, fabrics and I pressed them in half and then each side to the middle to create this folded strap. And then we're going to take the um, material that's included with your kit here and we're gonna sandwich this inside. But one thing I do wanna do before I do that is I'm gonna take the end of this, I forgot to do that on the sample, and fold this down about a half an inch so that we don't have any raw edges exposed. So I'm gonna do that really quick just eyeballing it. There we go. And then I can press this back in. And again. So we don't wanna have to fight with this when we're at the machine. There we go. So now we're gonna take this strap that's included in your kit with your printed batting and we're gonna actually lay this inside. And I just like to open it up and slide it in. And if you'll notice, I'm leaving it right at the bottom of that half inch fold that we made. I'm not putting it under that, so that way we're not dealing with the bulk when we go to attach these straps. So I've just laid that in there, and I'm just gonna keep working my way down. And I actually don't worry about it getting all the way in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and start sewing this closed now, because um, then I'll just fold this over, and we're just going to stitch right along the edge to enclose it, and I'll just keep working this end in at the machine. So let's do that. And I just lined it up with the edge of my presser foot. So it's just about an eighth inch seam. I'm gonna back stitch there. I'm 
make sure. Yep, looks nice. There we go. You do want to take your time since you're working with, you know, that thick uh, kind of webbing. Webbing, yeah. I'm like, I don't know exactly what to call it, but. Yeah, so we actually had a couple of questions about some materials you can use. So sure. you can absolutely use Insel Bright, you can absolutely use webbing. All of that comes with this pre printed batting. Mm -hmm. So you're ready to go if you grab this. Yeah, to if make you this grab whole the, this uh, little pre printed quilt as you go insulated shopper tote from June Taylor, the batting, the strapping, and then, like I said, the um, little rubber band kind of things to, to make closures if you wanted those are optional. And I did not do those for mine, but that all comes inside of your kit. Yep. So we're just going to keep sewing down this. And I'm just going to take a minute to adjust this and make sure we are all lined up. Oops, don't go too fast. there. If you have any other questions, Liz, yeah, free, feel Yeah, so Misty, free. people are asking, like, what kind of stitch length are you using and are you using anything special? I'm not. I'm, I'm, like, right at a, like, a 2.5, 2.8, somewhere in there. I'm just below a 3. And are you um, sewing through the webbing or just to the side of it? So this is actually, there are some points where it definitely is catching the webbing. Um, and depending on if you're a little particular like me, <laughs> on this sample, I went ahead and sewed on both sides, in which case you will absolutely be sewing through the webbing. Mm -hmm. um, but on the pattern, it doesn't say that you have to. And so if you were really careful, you could probably avoid it. But as long as you take your time and have a good sharp needle, I had no problem sewing through it. And so just uh, kind of be mindful of your machine and what you're comfortable with. But it's so far been really, really simple. Again, just making sure that that is inside the fabric where I want it. There we go, got the last of it all lined up, and now we can just continue on. So folks, love as you're chiming in, yes, zigzag stitch would look great. Yes. Different decorative stitches would look great. Exactly. Definitely have fun embellishing. Exactly. And and honestly, you could even use those decorative stitches when you're quilting yeah. and doing these lines. You know, it's such it's such simple, straight stitching, and you're not going through a ton of layers. And so it's a great way to kind of be adventurous and play with those stitches that we don't always get to use. Um, I do want to point out, I. I did not trim this down to the exact length of my my cording, webbing, whatever you'd like to call this. And so I'm just going to cut this off about an inch down since I do need to have that one inch fold over. And I'm just going to do that here at the machine. I've placed my scissors somewhere where I can't see them. There they are. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to eyeball that one inch. This really is forgiving. And then I'm just going to fold this up and tuck this all back in so that I don't have those raw edges exposed okay. as I approach the end of the this handle here. And that's one go. of the other things that we love about doing live is you guys also share so many great ideas. So folks are talking about you could add a zipper or other kind of closures to the top. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Lots of ways to make this your own. So this is how we made this. Exactly. And then but you can make it your you own. You can do however your heart <laughs> desires. So many options. Okay. And 
So there we are at the end. I've backstitched just a little bit. And so now we have our cord all inside and our handle is ready to go. And I have the other one already made. And so let me show you, because the next step is to actually attach these to the outside of your bag. So I have here, um, I've marked where these need to go. And so what you're looking for is you're going to measure in from the outside edge, seven and a quarter inches, and that's gonna be the start of your mark. And it's going to go in one inch. And then that whole, that whole line should be down 15 inches. And you're gonna do that from all four sides. And so hopefully you can see here, I've made four marks here. So everywhere that the straps are going to attach. And so again, that's in seven and a quarter, and that's, the, that's this outside point right here, and down 15. And then from that point, you mark in one inch. So same thing, all four places. Super, super easy. And don't worry, those instructions are part of the yes, insulated bag. That's all included. So when you buy that, it has awesome, an awesome instruction uh, guide with diagrams, pictures that will walk you through this whole thing. So you don't have to remember all that. Don't sweat, sweat it. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to, let me make sure I do this correctly, this way, there we go. We're going to line up with our um, half inch overlap so that it's going up towards the top of the bag. And where did my pins go? I can't find anything today. Grab some pins. So I'm just gonna make sure that's lined up on our mark, and it is. And we're going to pin that side in place, and then we're going to just be careful and make sure that we don't have any twists or anything in our handle. And we're gonna pin the opposite side. And we can do that. There we go. And then you can fold this back and I'm gonna actually go ahead and do the other side as well. And then I can stitch all of these down at the machine at once. So there's that one. And they're insisting, Misty, that mm. I tell you your nails look great. Oh, thank you so much. Mm. That is so sweet. And also this fabric. We are so in love with this fabric. It's just the happiest, isn't it? It's so cute. And so then we're gonna pin this one. And you do wanna be careful because the, the cording is thick to pin through. So just, oh, this one doesn't wanna go. Don't stab your fingers. Don't stab your fingers, that's right. All right. So I'm just going to recap real quick while you're pinning. Sure. So we've used about a yard. We're actually cut it down to it was 24 inches wide by mm -hmm. width of fabric. Yep. Um, so about a yard of this beautiful popsicle fabric to do a whole. The whole outside. Whole outside. Yep. And then this package of the June Taylor Quilt As You Go insulated cooler bag. Yeah. Insulated shopper tote. Insulated is what shopper they call tote. It. Thank yep. you. No problem. And then we've got this contrasting fabric that we're using for the straps and what we'll use for the lining as well. And some of you are getting a little ahead of us. We got some sneak ideas yeah, just, for how to line this. So just you wait. Hold so. one second. Okay, let me make sure you guys can see here what I'm doing. And so now, um, I've again, remember I've got those markings and that's a really helpful guide to show me where to start and stop stitching to attach these straps. So let me get that done because we are just going to sew right where we marked. Okay. And we're just gonna sew straight across and back stitch at the, the start and the stop. Clip threads, go to the next one. Make sure we're lined up. And those marks are so helpful because then we know that our handles are gonna be attached in the same place on both sides. They're gonna line up nicely make it easier to carry way easier to carry <laughs> a little less wonky i love christine michelle says this would be a great pool or beach bag to keep water and snacks cold yes absolutely so i've got those ones attached we're going to flip it around do this other side all right 
Let me make sure. There's my mark. And one more. Okay, so now the base of our straps is attached. We can take out those pins so they're not going anywhere. And we can fold these back just like so. And then I do want to go ahead and put a few more pins in place to just hold these down because we're just going to do some straight line stitching to attach these handles on both sides. So you can kind of echo that um, seam that you made when you were making your handle and then do it again on the other side, which is why I went ahead and just sewed on both sides all the way around. It just made it easier for me because I wanted it to look that way. But again, you could just have it here and then you're going to actually stop stitching. Let me make sure I tell you the right amount. I think it is three inches, but I want to make sure that's what they tell you. Yep, three inches. So you're going to stop three inches from the top. So why don't we go ahead and put our pin, where's my little ruler? There it is. Put our pin three inches down so that we don't have to worry about that too much. And then we know when we get to this pin, it's time to stop. And as you're pinning through that webbing, Jill mm -hmm. remains asking, are you using a regular needle in the machine or a heavy duty one? It seems awfully hard to pin. Um, it is hard to pin, but amazingly, this is just uh, like a sharps needle that we've got in here and it's sewing through really well. I didn't have any issue with it. And to tell you the truth, um, <laughs> in, in my studio that I sew in every day, um, I don't even know what needle I had on, have on the machine right now. And I had <laughs> no problems at all. <laughs> so I did not switch out the needle for that one. But if um, you, but if you do have uh, questions about needles, we have, we an did episode. just have a live where we covered a lot of that. So we'll link that for you so you can yeah. check that out for more information on pins and needles. And to be totally honest, this uh, pin cushion that I grabbed is one of the oldest ones up here on set. So a lot of these pins are kind of dull. And so that's why yeah. I'm struggling to pin. Um, a little behind have, the scenes action. Yeah, if you have good sharp pins, it wouldn't necessarily be quite as challenging, but that's okay. The other thing that's really great about um, the straight line quilting that we've done is it gives you a guide when you're lining up this strap. You can kind of see and make sure that your spacing is the same all the way up. So we're just gonna take that little ruler wherever it wanders off to keeps disappearing on me guys oh there it is <laughs> so funny they have a way of doing that don't they and again measuring down three inches and I just like to take care of both of these at the same time so when I take it to the machine I can just get through it this this dull pin is just really making it a hard hard day okay there we go Got it, and one more, down three inches, and pin. There we go. Note to self, get new pins. Okay, all right. So then, you know, again, super simple straight line stitching. Because you are dealing with a little more bulk, um, if you wanted to use a walking foot to work all of this through, you could. I did not, I just really took my time. And so we're just gonna start stitching this on. Oh, sorry about that, Isaac. I'm really close to that needle, so I'm just gonna watch carefully. Back stitch, we never wanna sew over that. And then I can cut my threads. 
and then I'm going to come up the other side. And you would just repeat that same exact thing on all four of your straps. And you can see that turns out beautifully and attaches so nice, looks really professional and finished. So Very we're going to pretend that all of these are attached, yep. okay, just for time. And so what you're going to do next is you would fold these in and we are going to lay this whole thing right sides together, okay. And now this is a great opportunity to um, pin it if you need, use some clips at the top to hold it together. Um, you just don't want things shifting around and you do want to make sure that your handles are out of where you'll be stitching. And where we're going to be stitching now is on this dashed line. And so we're going to start by sewing straight down either side here. And then I'll show you what we do to box the corners. So let's do that first. This is a half inch seam allowance that they've given you here. Just make sure you're staying lined up. And like Misty said, you can pin this, you can clip this. Exactly. You can wing it, whatever exactly. works for you. I mean, as really, as long as it's lined up, um, you've got this amazing marking on this batting for you. This dashed line is exactly where you need to sew. So you just need to line your needle up with that and you're good to go. Still looking good. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to turn and do the opposite side. to run out of bobbin no bobbin oh no <gasps> guys that's you never guys. happened to anybody how did i get perfectly through this other side you know what these are like those quilting mysteries that that's you right just, the mysteries of the universe you just are not sure exactly how this stuff happens all right since this is an inside seam i am going to swap out a bobbin and not actually wind another purple one but you would usually want to use your matching yep matching thread. So we're just going to put in this one that I've got here. Yes, we've in. all we've all been there. Right. You run it out of bobbin thread. It happens to all of us. I even said beforehand, we might be playing a little bobbin roulette. You just <laughs> never know. All right. Well, let's do that again, shall we? All right. Tell us in the comments, guys, what happens when you run out of bobbin <laughs> thread? Do you do you have that like beat the bobbin and you've got that two inches of bobbin thread left well um natalie has one of those machines that like sings to you and tells you when your bobbin's getting low oh jealous and i'm like man i need one of those because i'm always just you know going until i can't go anymore that's mm -hmm. just how it works all right so now we're gonna hopefully have this actually stitch yes success this time all right all right, and we'll just keep on keeping on. Yes, 
Kathy, exactly. Happy we're not the only one this happens to. I think this is very, very real. Yeah, it is. One of the first wishes, if we ever meet a genie, Cop Copper says, is a never-ending bobbin. I'm totally with <gasps> you, Copper. That would be the most magical thing, wouldn't it? Okay, so we've got our two sides stitched down, and now we're just going to pinch the bottom here. And you can see, because it's pre-printed, they've marked it for you, it creates this perfect boxed corner. And so now I can just lay this flat and stitch right again on that dashed line on both sides, and we'll have these great boxed corners. You do want to make sure that you backstitch at the start and stop of this so you don't have your threads come out. And do you do anything with that seam you're going to go over? Oh, you can, you can fold it open or to either side. I'm just going to fold it to one side. Okay. Again, it's really whatever you're comfortable with. There's that one and this one. I like you're thinking Molly Miller, Christmas gifts done, she says. I know, right? I'm trying to give you guys lots of good gift ideas before the holidays sneak up on us. Okay. So ta-da! Now that is all made into the shape of a bag that we need. And so you can actually go ahead and turn this one right side out. And so now I do want to talk a little bit about why I decided to not use all the strips um, as the pattern originally indicates. Uh, because they would have had, since this is a quilt as you go project, you would have basted your backing onto the back and sewn each strip on individually and it would this piece that we just boxed would have been essentially quilted and ready to go. But when you went to sew your bag together, you would have had these raw edges on the inside. I personally don't love raw edges inside of my bags. And so I, I changed this up because I wanted the inside to be finished. And so you can see here on the sample that I made, let me get my little plastic base out. The lining is completely separate, and I actually put some iron on vinyl on this one so it's easy to wipe down if you have spills or anything. But by doing this, there's no raw edges. It's finished even in the inside, and um, I was just way happier with that result. Um, and you could still do that if you decided to use the strips on here. You could absolutely still have it um, not have raw edges on the inside. So it's really whichever you prefer, but I was just trying to make it a little easier on myself. So I went with the solid yardage and then this great lining. And so let me show you. I used um, my lining fabric. I cut it the exact same size as my um, outside piece. And you can see I even cut it out in the exact same shape. So it's the exact same shape. We're going with the exact same idea that we just did on that bag. And we're just going to assemble it the exact same way. And because we're working with solids, there's not really a right or wrong side. Mm -hmm. If you have a right side, make sure you're putting right sides together. <laughs> and then we're just going to sew again, just like we did on that last one. Remember, you're using a half inch seam allowance. So let me move this out of the way so you can see. Right, good reminder because usually yeah. quilters, we use a quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna use a half inch seam allowance on this bag. Exactly, and that just gives it a little extra strength. We don't have to worry about any of the stitches popping out. So I'm just going to sew down this. And the one you're making now, you haven't added the vinyl. To I it. haven't added the vinyl. I just wanted to show that as an option. If, yep. Um, before, before I cut it out like this, I would have just adhered that vinyl to my piece of yardage and then cut out um, the shape that I needed. So that's what you did for the blue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. But I just wanted to save that step for time. 
So yes, Kathy, same yardage as outside. It's about a 24 inch wide piece by the width of fabric. Yep. Um, so, but we used about a yard and a half of that purple so that you use that for the binding and the straps as well. Exactly. Good question. All right, and then down the other side. Again, we're just going to pinch that at the bottom just like we did before. These line up beautifully just like so and we take this to the machine with that half inch. Just take your time and make sure that they're staying lined up. side almost done it's so tantalizingly close I know we're almost there da, da, da. just want to make sure I don't have anything tucked under there when I sew that these, box corner. that box corner yep you just want to make sure it's all nice and smooth after all this hard work you don't want to catch anything in your seam right Connie and Sue are both asking about adhering the vinyl. Mm -hmm. So um, Sue's asking, do you use the powder to adhere the vinyl? And Connie said, how do you adhere the vinyl? So we can show you a little bit of that in a second. That's a great question. I, I can demo okay. that. And actually, when you purchase that vinyl, it's all included it's in the instructions. It's got all the instructions. Yep. Awesome. That's all on there for you. And you don't actually need any type of adhesive. It is, it's an iron-on adhesive that's on that vinyl. Awesome. Okay. So now we have got this all assembled and we're actually going to keep it right sides out and from this point you would just slip it inside of this bag and I would go ahead and line up my side seams and put a pin or a clip in there just like so to make sure that those match up And then I, I would pin all the way around this. And then you're just going to attach binding as you would any quilting project. So um, you can use two and a half or two and a quarter inch strips, depending on how thick of a binding. I used um, two and a half on mine. Because I had the vinyl, I wanted to make sure that I had some extra wiggle room. And I just um, machine bound this whole thing. So I actually, as a little tip with the vinyl, since I knew it was gonna be slicker to work with, I went ahead and sewed my binding to just that inside lining piece first. Um, so, you know, just this piece here before I even pinned it in place, sewed it all the way around. And then I slid it inside, pinned it in place, and pulled the binding around and top stitched it all the way around the outside. Very cool tip. Uh, it makes it way, way easier. I can assure you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I messed around a lot with that. Um, but anyway, it turns out so great. It's adorable with the vinyl or without. Um, I chose to add the vinyl, like I said, because I wanted to make sure if we had, you know, ice cream or something inside here and it, we had a spill, it would be easy to wipe clean. And so let me show you just a quick demo of how that works before we wrap up. So this is how the iron-on vinyl comes. It's heat and bond um, vinyl, and there's all kinds of great information here. And so it tells you exactly what to do. So we're going to preheat our iron to medium heat, no steam. So let's change this and turn off my steam. And then I'm just gonna cut out a little piece just to kind of show you how this works. And then you can get an idea of it. 
And there we go. All right, so now I've got this little chunk of the vinyl and there's actually um, like a protective paper on the back. Let me grab a little scrap of fabric to show you. Find one big enough here, sorry. Digging in the scrap bin. That's okay. Mm. Well, usually there's layer cakes in here. Oh, there we go, found one, okay. So here's just a little scrap of fabric. And we're just gonna press this so it's nice and smooth. You would wanna do the same thing if you're working with your yardage for this project. Just make sure you've got all those wrinkles out. And then we're going to peel off this protective paper. Just like so. And it is kind of sticky on the back side of this vinyl. And so then you're going to place that on your fabric where you want it. And again, you can see why I attached the vinyl before I cut out my shape, because you do want to make sure that you have some extra around so it's a little bit forgiving. And so you just lay that on here and then you take the protective paper again, or um, I actually use the protective paper and then another piece of fabric just because I didn't want to have any risk at all of melting that vinyl to my iron. So I'm just gonna open up this yardage here so I don't have to worry about it. And then I'm just gonna put this down so it acts as kind of a protective barrier. And then we are just going to press that on. Medium heat, no steam, right? Right. And then now if I can get that paper back off. And just like that. Just like that, it adheres that vinyl to your fabric. And then it is just becomes one piece and you just sew with it as normal. It does make it a lot more slippery. So just be aware of that. It's, it's not really challenging. It just means you have to slow down and take your time. But it's a really great product. And it's, it's literally perfect for something like this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I hope... I covered all of your questions. Is there anything else, Liz? Well, I have a great shout out from Susan who says, I'm making tote bags to put Christmas presents in this year. Then they can be used as reusable shopping bags next year. What I a love great that. double gift. Yes, absolutely. And then just a quick thought as we're finishing the edge of this project, we have something else about finishing oh, coming you're tomorrow. You're right, Liz. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Hopefully some of you have seen that Natalie has some amazing new videos where she's answering questions from quilters like you and I. And the first episode um, of The Final Stitch with Natalie Earnhardt airs tomorrow at 11 o'clock central. And you can find that every other Wednesday uh, going forward. So yep. Natalie's amazing. You're going to love all of the great content that it's actually not live. So you'll submit your questions and then she'll answer them and they'll release every Wednesday. So if you can't catch it live, don't worry, it will be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, just like always. That's all right. So we'll be premiering at 11, but you yes. don't have to be there at 11 to get it. Exactly. But make sure you check it out. Nat's been working so hard and I can't wait to watch it. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you as always for tuning in and we will see you next time. Thank you.